Hi, I'm the Morelander and this is Morelander EDC. This really is a piece of content that I've been wanting to make for quite some time, in fact. Um, there's a myth, you know, if you listen to the world media, um, you, they would have you believe that the gun community here in the UK is tiny. Um, in fact, it, you know, it, it's just not here. It's it's impossible to own a firearm here in the UK, which which is an out and out lie. You know, the gun community here in the UK is massive and it grows um, on a daily basis, and it's just got even easier to purchase an AK-47. That's because today we're going to have a look at the Goat Gun AK-47. Now, this is something that I've been wanting to just make some content on for so long. Such an iconic gun and um, yeah, so this this is the scaled down replica of it. Um, so, you know, I'm gonna turn the camera around so we can take a closer look at this, but while I'm doing this, you know, there's some interesting facts that I've been finding about the this, this gun itself. Um, so what I'll do is while well, you know while I'm talking about this, I'll, I'll I'll give you some facts that I think history's trying to be trying to trying to cover up. Um, like for example, uh, Mikhail um, Kalashnikov was supposedly the uh, the designer of this, um, but that's not true. During the early 1900s, Mikhail attended the Texas Institute of Technology and Science, where he. He shared a room with this guy. His name is uh, Derek Dalglish, um, and he was the original designer of the AK-47. Kalashnikov actually stole his idea for it and brought this, brought the original gun to market, which is which is crazy. They were originally thinking um, instead of the AK, which is the, the the automatic Kalashnikov, they were thinking of calling it the DD, which would have been you know for for Derek Dalglish, but. They they thought that the double D forty seven sounded too much like, too much like a bra size. So they you know they they carried on with the AK forty seven. But you know, amazing facts like this. This video is going to be absolutely full of amazing facts. Um, I'll turn the camera around so that you can see, we we can get this together. I'm I'm absolutely seething to get this seething. Is that the right word? Or is that when I'm angry? Anyway. Gonna get this together. If at any point you do enjoy this content, or even find it funny at any point, please feel free to hit and uh, hit the like and subscribe. Don't hit me. Um, that would be great. But for now, let's turn the camera around and let's take a closer look. Can I just quickly? So, so the packaging that came with this mainly, you know, it, it's got a bit tattered, but I think that is mainly because of, um, you know. It had some issues getting to me, but this was sent um, from the, uh, the the Europe website or the European website. So I'm just checking what's in here. So uh, okay, cool. So we've got a nice little goat gun sticker. There is a um, acknowledged AK-47 sticker. Thank you for your order. Another cool little sticker. And then we've got assembly guide, which takes you through it all, which obviously I'll be following. I really want to make sure that I do this properly. Uh, on the back here, so this this is a uh, this is a replica you know, age blah blah blah. Um, but you know all the little bits on here, the dust cover, and it's it's everything. It's absolutely amazing. So let, let's uh, honestly, I've, <laughs> it's been. Killing me not putting to this, not putting this together um, over the last over the last few days since this arrived here at Castle Morlander. Um, okay, what am I doing? Right. Okay, let's get the instructions out. Let's put the instructions just there and open this. All right. Okay. So there's there's a little staple there. I suppose that makes perfect sense for when it's being shipped. All of the stuff will, stuff will stick together. So I'm just going to pop these off. Got a little clear plastic part at the top. Uh, this is like, oh, it's like a nice felt kind of lined. Um, a lot like those plastics that you kind of used to get in the 80s. So here are all of the individual little parts. Now these are all metal parts. It's it's completely metal apart from um, the, uh, the the wooden stock there, which isn't wooden. It, it's 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 plastic. And then you know the um, the guards here. These are these are plastic as well. 
Um, so you get some little, a little screwdriver, I'll just put that to one side, open this up, you get a screwdriver, there are a few screws, how many screws are there, okay so there are one, two, three, four screws, that one's a little bit smaller, that's got a rounded head and they're both two recessed ones, there is a small slither of metal there, there is uh, the spring and oh no sorry there is an, an extra one and that looks like it's the same as those and then there's a small magnet here that you can attach to the screwdriver so that when you're wanting to put these in rather than having to to try and do it with your hand you can put those on there and the, the, the magnet will make sure that they stay in place okay so the first bit is to So here we've got the barrel, we need to take the handguard, as that goes, how does this work, alright okay yep, so you have to line these two up, then you have the bottom handguard which has a little notch that slides in here at the back. This bit slides forward to keep that bottom handguard in place. Then there is the top handguard which would cover the gas. Does that go in that way? Yep, that goes in that way. I forgot it the wrong way around. Sorry, had that in the wrong way around. Hopefully you can see this. I hope you can see this. This might make Particularly boring content if you can't. Ah, okay. So there is a there's a little pin on the inside of there, so that slides in like that, and then they come forward. So it's a bit of a fiddle. It's a bit of a fiddle to get it in. All right. So you have to make sure that these all slot in properly. You know. There you go. I've learned something. So there you have that assembly. And then you have the first screw, which looks like it is one of these screws. So this will then, which makes sense so that it sits flush. So that screws in into here. No, that's not the right screw. Is it the shorter one? I think it's the shorter one. Hopefully this is interesting. <laughs> While I'm doing this, so I don't know if you knew this, but the AK-47, you know, we've already kind of touched on why it's called the AK. Um, but the 47, there's, there's there's some more kind of misinformation on that. If, if you check the internet, most people would have you believe that the 47 relates to the year in which it came into service, which is, which is actually incorrect. The 47 relates to when this was originally designed. It was designed in such a way that it should be able to fit perfectly into a 47-year-old man's hand. But obviously in current times that's that's not particularly PC or correct to think about it in that way. Um, and the AK-47 has, has become a bit of an icon as far as um, inclusivity. Uh, it is now one of the most inclusive uh, weapons out there used by women and children around the world in lots of different war zones. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's an incredibly inclusive rifle now. Uh, so this bit, so we're just pushing back the the gas bit. I'm just gonna have to do this slightly off camera because you need to push this in here so that it goes through underneath there. Obviously these all have technical part names which I'm probably fluffing right now. Just push that through an extra little bit so that it goes into the recess here at the back. 
So there you go. So there, so that's in. So we're starting to assemble the barrel and uh, and, and the gas system here. Uh, after that, there is. Another way around. Is it reverse thread? No, it's normal thread. So the flash hide it. Screws onto the front. After that, we can attach the stock to the receiver, which pushes on as it does on the real one and then there are two screws to hold that in place. Now, I do say screw the two medium length screws. Now I'm guessing these are the medium length screws. I think, I think when we're used to things like Ikea where it tells you exactly that this is the screw B whatever, um, if I'd give any feedback to goat guns, it would just be to label these screws um, easier or maybe even do it the old school Lego way where you know you have a little picture of all of the different screws at the beginning. If I've missed that, that would really make me look like a bit of an idiot. So there you have, oh, it's even got the selector as well. That's epic. There's the mag release. Uh, so, so now we're starting this to take some shape. Hopefully this is interesting to watch. I really do hope it is. Uh, so next we then need to put in the firing pin. Uh, so there we have that. Here is the spring guide uh, and the the bolt. So the bolt goes in the opposite side because you know those those go in on the left. There is a little rail, oops, there's a little rail here on the inside for this to follow, so that slides down there which, you know, that works. Push that in, make sure that the pin goes into it, and then at the back end here there's another little recess for that to sit in, so that now, oh this is, this is epic. Hopefully you can see there, that works, that's really cool. What does it say next? Oh, actually, I missed. No, sorry, I missed a step. I, I did it. I did it in the wrong order. There you go. Not reading the instructions properly. This was the bit that I was supposed to put on next with the two medium screws. Hopefully, these are the right ones. Maybe I've put the wrong ones in. Ah, <gasps> see, there you go. Shall I take these out? Will these come out? Should that have that probably should have gone in there? So there you go. You'll see I'm making mistakes so that you don't have to. The two flat head, the recessed ones go in here. Well, do they? Let's get that in. It would make sense that they do. Are these the medium ones. Maybe these aren't the medium ones. Maybe these are the long ones. Is this the medium one? It is. There you go. Fingers crossed I haven't stripped the threads. No. So that's that one. Does that mean that should have gone there? Probably. Let's put that one in. There you go, so that one can go back here at the back. Let's put you back in. As far as the process is concerned, you know, it's it's relatively simple. It's nice and easy. Although, you know, I'm struggling with the screws. So that then slides in, wrong way around. That then goes into there as well. So now we've, yep. Yeah. And then the last little thing, we need to put the dust cover on. Now I've watched a few of these online and this is the bit where a lot of people tend to come undone. 
which I'm told you just need to give it a wee bit of force. Well, let's see. Having never put a gun like this together in real life, does that go on the inside or does that go on the outside? So that goes under there. Does that go further down? Feel free to talk amongst yourselves, children, while uh, while I do this. Does that go in like that? Ah, right, okay, so that slides forward. Or does it? Because there's, there's the what's it at the back, isn't it? So that should... Does it just slide forward? I mean, it must do. So that goes underneath there. That goes in there. And then I can see that there's a lip. There is a lip underneath here that that then clearly has to go into. which I can get it to go into there, but then that needs to go underneath that. Wow, this this last little bit, this last little bit is really tricky. Um, and like I say, so I've, I've seen on the website, it, it says that you really need to just give it some force. So the dust cover, push it forward and push it down until the rest of it goes into the groove in the stock. Okay, all the AK guys out there, how 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 do you do this in real life? Is there is there a is there a knack to this? That's oh, I thought I'd done it. Okay, so having. Like I say, having seen online, a lot of people say that this bit really is hard and I have to admit it is very hard. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video here and then I'll come back once I've got it done. Okay, so it turned out it's a little bit easier than I thought it was. Um, if I get this, okay, so here there's this, there's this little pin here at the back. If I bring this a little bit closer, so there's a, there's a little pin here, and then behind this there is a small little lip. So the front of the dust cover, one has to go underneath this lip here, and then it has to go into the back. Well, this pin is on this spring, so if you can push this pin forward, which it will do because there are runners here, really, you know, this is supposed to slide backwards, but while you're doing this, it can slide forwards. So if you get this, push that in, so that it's just on the inside of the hole here, and then push it down, you can do that. So there's a little bit of finesse to it, um, but now that I've got it in there, I can see where, where I was going wrong. I was trying to push it down past that. But if you can push this bit in, then it'll allow you to do that. So to finish off the assembly, we have three little mini non-firing to the people at YouTube. These are, they're not, I mean, they're not even blanks. They're just solid copper rounds. Um, so we can put our 762 by 39. And in fact, you know, has I been throwing out all of this information today? Um, when they were originally looking and choosing rounds to use, um, they decided to go with the 769 by 32, uh, sorry, 762 by 39, um, because it was um, Derek Dalglish's locker number. So there you go. That's another little nod away from um, Mikhail Kalashnikov to to the uh, to the actual original designer of the uh, of the AK47, and that slips in exactly as you do with the real steel. So there is the the pin that you push forward here to get it to get out, and there is the small lip on the front which needs to be pushed in first, 
rather than a direct push in. And then the last little thing on here as well, and this is completely metal, so there is there is a little metal stand. So hopefully if you can see here, there is a small pin there which fits into the hole here. So if you wanted to have this on your desk, it will sit nice and proud for anyone that is a gun owner. And here you have the little one third scale of AK-47. And I, I, I've got it, I've got, I mean, I've got to take some time to have a sit and look at this. This is absolutely awesome. So as I say, you've got the fire selector, whether you're on safety or, you know, automatic or semi. Uh, there are some little sights that pop up here. They do just pop up. You can't, you certainly can't change the what's on there, but that, that's cool anyway. You've got that forward sight, which you can, which you can look through the, the, the flash suppressor here at the front. Um, I think because I took this off and put it back on again, I have got a little wobble in there, but I probably just need to uh, fasten those screws down and maybe a little bit tighter. Metal uh, end to the buttstock here. Uh, and there is a little metal sling point here, which will also attach to the front. I'm guessing that might be another accessory. You can get a drum mag for this, which I might just pick up. And they also do the Sig Sauer MCX is it? Um, which for, for this model, when you when you uh, when you when you move the pin, the, the the bullets don't come out. With the Sig Sauer one, as you do this, it will rack the bullets and eject the bullets, which is pretty cool. Uh, oh, and there's um, there's a little trigger which actually moves as well. This wee little thing really is impressive. Now, while I was off camera, I did have a bit of a fiddle around with some of the screws in here. So the, the screws here at the end where the stock was in just needed to be tightened. And there was a couple of screws that you'd seen hopefully underneath here, they just needed to be tightened as well. Um, and that stopped a lot of the wobble. The only wobble that you can hear now is from the, is from the pin. Uh, and there is a little bit of wobble in that dust cover, but from what I understand from AK owners, the real steel AK owners, um, that is what the AK charm is all about. There's a little bit of wobble, there's a little bit of jankiness to them to them all. I might even scuff this up a little bit just to put some distressing around it so that it looks like a real steel AK after, after years and years and years of use. Um, I hope today's, I hope this piece of content's been interesting, mainly because, you know, as I say, I've had this for a few days now, and this is the first time that I've took it out of its packaging and I've, and I've put it together. Um, it's a little bit of me learning whilst making this content, um, but hopefully if you do pick one of these up, it'll give you a little bit more of an insight into how to put it together and maybe some of the struggles that I've had and, and possibly how to overcome those. A um, couple of things to add, so, so this was purchased with my own money, this this hasn't been sent to me, although, hey, Goat Gun, I, I'd love to make some more content on this. Um, I'm definitely going to pick up the SIG MCX because this is awesome and the, the SIG MCX has got the folding stock on it, it's got its little sight and everything, um, and although this one doesn't rack the... Um, it doesn't do the, the actual bullets themselves. That one does, which is freaking awesome. So I'll leave some links in the description below for these, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, especially for people here in Europe, you don't have to worry about purchasing this from the US. Um, Goat Guns now have a European site, European distrib distributor, uh, so it makes these a lot easier to get to. The only difficulty that I had was with the courier company bringing it to me uh, rather than Goat Guns actually getting this out. So that, that's always good and it certainly makes them easier to pick up. Um, and maybe I might send them an email trying to see if I can get some more so we can make some further content. This is going pride of place on my desk in the studio. It's absolutely amazing. Now, as always, I'll leave some of my social media links in the description below. Um, it's YouTube. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. That would be absolutely amazing. It helps for my channel so that I can make further content just like this. But for now, stay safe, stay more Linda, and stay EDC.